Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video, this one being about my top tips for spearfishing from the shore. Shore diving for those starting out is simply diving from the shore instead of a boat. It's as simple as that. It's actually how most of us start spearfishing and actually get an introduction into the sport itself. In no way, shape or form is shore diving a lower version of the sport. Shore diving can be quite hard to access larger fish, but it makes it even more rewarding when you do actually find one and you manage to catch it on the basic gear which you've brought down with you on a shore dive. The trick is find someone with good visibility, minimal swell and wind, and somewhere where there's not much boat traffic. Every time I go for a shore dive, I always try and target areas that haven't really been dived before. I see it as untouched territory, and it's always nice to discover somewhere new. Take this pollock for example, it was taken only in about 10 meters of water, 100 yards from the shore, in an area where it isn't really accessed by other spear fishermen. So what do I look for when I go shore diving? Before I go shore diving, I normally use Google Maps to get a good scope and the lay of the land before I get down there. Google Maps will give you a good idea if there's any rock or reef, and you should be able to see, uh, due to the color and the shading, if there's any sand patches or pinnacles or areas where there's lots of kelp. Now, once you've found your location or a location that you think is suitable, the next thing you need to consider is your entry point. Your entry point needs to offer you a clean and simple route into the water. Again, this can be found on Google Maps, or if you're diving with someone that's dived this location before, make sure you come up with a plan on where you're gonna get into the water, what you're gonna do if something goes wrong, and how you're gonna get out. And if you're diving on your own, that's something you should consider anyway, is having some sort of plan in your head if something was to go wrong. And this actually brings me on to my next point, which is your exit point. The entry point that you use to get into the water can actually be terrible for getting out of the water. And that's due to a few factors like the tide dropping, which can expose gullies and rocks that weren't actually there before. The tide might have changed and the, the wind might have picked up. So all the factors that were present at the entry point of the dive are now different on the exit point of the dive. So make sure you take this into account. So safety points when shore diving or spearfishing in general is always to let someone know where you're going and what time you'll be back. If nobody's in, I'll leave a note on the kitchen table, what time I left the house and what time I'm planning to be back. That way, if anything goes wrong and I'm not back within that time frame, people can start to question where I am and then you know send help if needs be. If you don't know the exact name of the place that you're diving, Again, use Google Maps, you'll be able to click on the chosen dive spot that you've found and you'll be able to get the latitude and longitude of this location. You can either write this down on a piece of paper or copy and paste it and send it to one of your friends, your missus, mum and dad, whoever it may be, so they know exactly where you're diving. You're probably listening to this right now thinking this is a bit overkill, but trust me, if something goes wrong, you'll be very thankful that you did this. When choosing a float or a buoy to take out with you shore diving, ideally you want something quite hard and rigid, and that's just simply due to the rocks. The first thing that your float should be able to do is give you rest when you need it. So the float that I'm using is a board from Salvamar, it's called a Manta 100, and it's basically a big body board that can support my weight uh, if, if I'm tired or I have a cramp or something like that. It also makes it a lot easier to fin through water where there's quite a strong current. Your float should be capable of giving you rest if you need it. So if you're really tired or you have cramp or something like that, you should be able to get on top of your float or hold on to your float and it should be able to support you above the water enough for you to rest. The second thing you need to have from your dive float is that it's easily visible from boats and other watercraft in the water. Not only that, you need your dive buddy to be able to see exactly where you are at all times. So if you're walking long distances like I do when I go out on a shore dive, it takes me about 20 minutes, half an hour to actually get to my dive spot. So having the incorrect bag can make this an absolute nightmare, especially when you're on the, on the way back having been diving and your kit's wet and you've got some fish and you weighed twice as much as you did before you went out. So what I like to use is a hiking bag. It's, uh, I'll go and get it. This thing is old as hell. Um, it's an old North Face uh, 
bag that I've had for years. It has, it has two straps and a waist strap, which allows for very comfortable walking, especially with a lot of kit. Fits my fins on the front and my wetsuit on the inside, and there's a small pocket for the weights and stuff to go in the bottom. Now, that's my personal uh, choice of bag. Obviously, you can, you can have a big grip, grip style bag with, uh, with straps, but I find they dig in quite a lot, especially when you've got a lot of weight on. So I try and stick to something that's actually made for carrying a lot of weight and walking, uh, and it does make it a lot easier. You'll find when you're spearfishing, and especially spearfishing from the shore, you'll find your wetsuit socks or booties will wear out a lot quicker than they would do normally. And you'll just have to accept this as part of the cost of spearfishing. But there is a solution to help prevent these socks and booties from ripping, and that's simply wear a pair of Crocs. You can wear the Crocs all the way up until the point of putting your fins on. Once you're in the water and you've put your fins on, simply take your Crocs off and attach them to your float. Exactly the same process for when you get out, take your fins off, put your Crocs on, and then walk back to where your bag is or your vehicle is parked. That way you're not gonna rip your socks and you'll find you'll get a lot more life out of them. Personally, when I go shore diving, I like to have both fish stringer and net. This way, if I bump into a lobster, I've got a space to put the lobster. Whereas I've been out on times where I've only had a fish stringer with me, found a nice sized lobster, picked it up, and I've got nowhere to put it. And I've had to swim all the way back to the shore, take my fins off, go to my bag, and put the lobster into the bag. That can be dangling off your float, as well as your fish stringer. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, then please leave them in the comment section down below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It's completely free to do so. It will just notify you every time I release a new video. Again, this video is aimed at beginners and for those watching this video who are experienced spearers, uh, I don't expect you to take anything from this apart from maybe the Crocs idea because that's like the best thing in the world. Um, but yeah, this, like I said, is aimed at new Spearos and beginners, so hopefully you guys have learned something from this. As some of you have probably seen, I'm very near to 10,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, and as a little bit of a thank you for this, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. If you've got any suggestions of prizes that could be won on the giveaway, then please leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, obviously sensible ones, no uh, silly ones like me giving away a boat or anything stupid like that, which I couldn't afford anyway. Um, Keep it reasonable and I'll do my best to try and to try and make this possible. We'll wear out and that's just a cost of spearfishing 